Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to look at how to join multiple color light cards together to give you a big old panel that you can do things not only in FPP but also watch TV. As I spoke about briefly in my last video, which I'll link to above, we can daisy chain color light cards to give us more flexibility in the build or to allow for bigger panels. Now by daisy chaining, I simply mean joining cards together like so to give you more outputs and more flexibility over your build. Now, of course, the panels don't have to be in the same frame. They just have to have some ethernet connecting them. So they can be separate, however far you need them to be. Now, now it's easier sometimes to build a number of smaller panels and then bolt them together for the finished article. This panel behind me is made just like that. It's a series of pre-built modules that come from the manufacturer as two panels wide four panels high for a total of 128 pixels by 128 pixels. Each module has its own power supply and its own color light card. And they're all configured ready to drive the panels in that little, pa in that little module. So in this panel behind me, I've joined eight such modules together. We've got four columns of two rows. So four across the top, four across the bottom. So how does it work? How are we going to join them together and make, make them function as one panel? Let's fire up LED vision and have a look. So that you can see immediately as we fire up LED vision that we've got the eight individual modules all doing exactly the same thing. Now they've been configured in the same way as we did on the previous video, only this is one row higher. It's been configured in LED vision just the same. And so having daisy chained all of the color lights together, they're all doing exactly the same thing. So if I grab my mouse and I move it over the little window, we'll see eight copies of my mouse. There we go, look at that. So we need to configure LED vision now to tell it that there's more than one card in use and what order they're connected in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to control and screen size and count settings. Our build is set for 128 by 128, which is the size of each module, but we need to increase that to the size of the complete panel. So in this case, it's 512 pixels wide by 256 pixels high. So we'll put 512 by 256 and apply. And you can see that each of the eight panels is now attempting to display the top left-hand corner of the complete build. So we need to tell them now that they are all in a chain and which position they are. I'm gonna go into control and LED screen settings. The password as ever is 168. We're still set to net card. We're still using the net card just the same as we did before. I can do an auto detect, it's the same nick. And when I detect receiver cards, this time we get eight of them because it can see all of the cards in the chain. This side of it is fine. We don't need to touch that. We don't need to touch the receiver parameters tab. That still stays exactly the same. It's the receiver mapping tab that we need to look at for our build. And over on the right hand side here, we need to set the number of columns and the number of rows applicable to our matrix. So in our case, we're gonna be on four columns by two rows. And then we need to tell it how the panels are cabled, how they're wired together. So it starts in the top left, it moves across, all the way across, it goes down to the far side, 
comes back across and ends up in the bottom left. So that's what we need to tell LED vision. So I'd simply click on the first panel, the first module, and then I can go to the second one, third, fourth, down to the fifth, six, seven, and eight. And that's the configuration done. All we need to do now is to push that to the modules, to the color light cards. So I'm gonna go down to save to devices, and immediately we can see the full size window has now set up and the color lights, color lights are all working together as one. So we've done save to devices there. We don't need to do the save on the receiver parameters tab this time because we haven't changed anything in here. So we can come out. And we're now ready to test our panel and make sure it's working as we expect. One of the fun things of LED vision is that you can play films uh, or video files directly from your PC. So let's demonstrate that now onto our panel. So I'm gonna go into the LED section on the left-hand side here. I'm gonna add a normal page. That's blanked the panel out. And then to the normal page, I'm gonna add a file window. I'm just gonna drag this out to the full size. There we go. And then to the file window, I'm gonna add a video file. So I'm gonna to go to add video. And what better TV program could we be watching on a panel such as this? Three, two, one. You can't beat a bit of great Christmas light fight. Anyway, enough of, uh, enough of the fun. How do we now move that forward and into... Look at that, I've ended on a pirate ship. Arr. How do we take that forward and into FPP? So I'm just gonna disconnect... Oh, I'm gonna disconnect the ethernet cable that's running to the panels uh, from my PC here. And I'm just gonna connect it to my Raspberry Pi that's on the end of the desk. Now I'm going to open up the browser window uh, to my FPP. Here we are. So here's the FPP uh, from before. This time I have already pre-configured it. I ran through how to in the video that I linked to earlier, so I'm not going to run through the whole thing again. So we can see in here that we configure the output in FPP as one big matrix. So we don't need to jump through any special hoops to identify the different color light cards or anything like that. It all just gets output as one big panel. So it's set up here for eight by eight. We're 64 by 32 one eighth scan. And our panels are all configured. And thank you again, devs, for the uh, auto layout feature. That saves a good few minutes when you're setting up a panel of this size. My start channel is one. My total channel count is 393,216 channels or 131,072 pixels. And they're in the BGR color order. Let's save that and restart FPPD. FPPD is restarting, the panel has blanked out and the pirate ship has gone. And we can now test, uh, we can run the test pattern to identify all of the panels and make sure they're configured. So there they all are, from panel 1-1 up in the top corner to panel 8-8 in the opposite corner. They're all doing the thing quite happily and it's configured nicely. We can, of course, uh, go through our status control display testing and test our panels as we did before. So I'm gonna go for solid color test pattern and just bring it down to off and enable, and then we'll go back and test the colors. So red is red and I appear to have some pixels out. There's three there that are not behaving. Look, that's not bad out of 131,000. Green, 
let's see green yep green is green and we've still got three pixels out and blue is blue and they're behaving now so that's always fun so display testing's done that works nicely that leaves us with one thing that we have to do we where would we be without a butterfly from x lights now i've already configured the panel in x lights so i'm not going to cover that again but i've done it i've generated an fseq and here is our favorite x lights test there we go so quite a quick one this week next week we're going to take this panel and we're going to demonstrate how to connect it to an x1 sender card so that you can watch dvds or you can plug in your fire stick um, or whatever it is that you want to do to watch tv or your favorite sports in the off season on your big old matrix have fun take care see you on the next one bye for now